Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Ari. I'm a Partner Enablement Manager here at Storage Craft Asia Pacific. And welcome to the demonstration today. So we're going to be talking about the Storage Craft Cloud Services and how it enables you to perform off-site disaster recovery. And as most notably, um, the cloud that we have available, which of course is fully localised in the APAC region out of uh, the Equinix Data Centre in Sydney. Um, the key feature and functionality of it is the fact that it enables you to perform near instant virtualization in a cloud scenario. So if you have a full on-site disaster and all the backups are gone, then you can actually virtualize in our storage craft cloud, connect into those machines and use them. And then when you're back on site and everything's ready to go again, then we can fully restore the original images plus all the changes back to the new machine. So it's a very seamless process there. And that's the reason that we've seen a very high uptake of the cloud, um, especially of late. So it's been out for a little bit of a, a year in Australia, I believe. Um, and it's picking up a lot more and more as it's becoming more accessible to people. So I'm going to be going through that today. Now, before I actually go into my portal to show you the functionalities of the cloud, how it looks, how it all works, I'm briefly going to show you a diagram just to talk about the configurational aspect of the Storage Craft Cloud and how it's all set up. So the great thing about the Storage Craft Cloud is that if you're a current end user or a reseller with end users running our solutions, you would most likely have the following setup. You'd be backing up the production servers to some sort of backup and disaster recovery appliance. Um, it might even be just like an image repository, like a NAS box or a backup server or a SAM, whatever you're using. And that will, of course, be monitored by Image Manager to verify, consolidate, and run retention settings. So to go to the cloud, it, we're literally simply setting up a replication job within Image Manager to the cloud services. So it's like just setting up a replication job and going to our cloud. So it's not like you need a massive overhaul of your current setup. You'll simply need to start replicating to the cloud services and then you're good to go. And then you get whatever features that are in your particular service level. Um, and we'll be going through all the different features and the service levels in the demo. So uh, you can see it's a pretty straightforward setup. So I'm looking into the cloud through my MSP portal, which is a managed service providers portal. Um, this is a portal that is available to resellers and MSPs um, who would like to join the program. If uh, for end users, you'll have access to your own individual cloud portal, of course. Um, and I'll, I'll just show you what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go straight into the cloud services area. So this is what a typical cloud portal will look like. You have the overhanging account and then sub accounts here. So as you can see, I've got a fair few here. My site is Ari's Copy Shop, so I'm going to click on that. So on the screen, you can see a few things. It will show you the utilization as well, so the current space, the utilizational trends, and also any devices that we currently have. So we've got one device in the cloud. It's using up 9 gig of storage. And you can see we sent it up in October, and since then it's been slowly growing as I've been doing demonstrations. And here in this box, it's kind of hard to see with my screen. I'll try and make it a little bit bigger. Um, gives you the ability to request a C drive. So if you're going into the cloud, if you've got a large volume of backups, you can actually request a C drive, which is an external hard drive, and can replicate the initial images to a C drive, then send it off to our data center, which means that you don't need to be replicating large volumes of data initially. And we do have an intelligent seeding process, which means that even once you send the C drive, the other images that aren't actually on that drive will be replicated to the second location, even if the drive's not there. And then as soon as the drive's there, all the images are seamlessly stacked on top of each other and you have the machine in the cloud. So intelligent seeding process, which is a very good idea. You can also activate account alerts and generate a static IP address if necessary for a testing scenario or for a disaster scenario if you need one. And up here, the Manage Devices button is what's going to give us the ability to actually look at the machine in the cloud. So I'm going to open that up. And when we get into the cloud, you'll see space used. You'll see the devices that we have, the data growth in the past day, week, and month, and any cloud virtual machines, what's active and what's not. Now, to take a look at the machines I have, I go into the Devices tab. As you can see here, I only have one machine here. It's an Exchange server, so I'm going to click that. And from here, I can have access to all the restoration features. So there are three features available within the Storage Craft Cloud. The first one is the physical restore, which will, of course, give you back the images so you can perform a restore. That will be sent to you on an external drive. 
a BMR or a bare metal restore drive as we call it. There's the file and folder recovery, which means that you can actually mount the recovery point, view the partitions or the volumes that you're backing up, and recover, literally download files and folders if necessary. So you can remotely re-recover those files by downloading them from the cloud. And of course, the virtualization aspect, which is the most popular aspect of the cloud and which is the biggest part of it. So you can near instantly spin up your machine in the cloud and even set up a VPN to connect it back to a location so you or your clients can access and utilize that machine. Now, the way that these features work and what features you get access to, they're summarized in service levels. So you don't simply pick and choose what you want. We have three different service levels. Um, and each service level have different functionality. So the first service level, which is the bottom one, is called Cloud Basic. Cloud Basic will only give you access to the physical restoration. You have the Cloud Plus, which will give you access to the physical restore, as well as the file and folder recovery option. And the Cloud Premium, which is the top of the line, it includes everything, including the virtualization. And the premium, I would, I would say from what I've seen, does make up about 90% of our cloud clients at the moment because people who go to the cloud or our cloud specifically do it for the virtualization. They do it for the really, really fast DR. And I can demonstrate that for you as well. So the physical restore, which of course is available in all uh, cloud service levels, simply enables you to enter a name and an address this is where the bare metal restore drive will be sent to you, so you can restore from these images. You can simply select the recovery point. Let's select the latest one, for example. Um, the system architecture, which is most likely 64-bit, enter the password and request the drive. And that BMR drive, you'll receive that. And then once you receive it, it's actually preloaded with the recovery environment, which means that all you need to do is boot up the BMR drive, and it will automatically take you through step-by-step -step that recovery process. So preloaded with everything, it's very easy for you to actually kick off the recovery from that drive. This is available in the Cloud Basic, Cloud Plus and Cloud Premium. It is the only feature of Cloud Basic. So if you're going to go for that, then you'll just have the ability to get a BMR drive to recover. Now the file and folder restore, this is part of Cloud Plus and Cloud Premium. You won't get access to it in Basic. It enables you to select a recovery point. Let's select the latest one, for example, if I want to recover a file or a folder. Enter my password. And once this mounts, it'll give me the ability to look at the C or the D volume. Let's say I'm going into my system volume. I want to recover the Shadow Protect logs, let's say that. So I go to my program files, go to Storage Craft, Shadow Protect, all my logs are here. So I'm going to download that. It will compress the folder or the file into a zip file. From here, all I need to do is hit download. It will begin the download. Now I can click in here, I can see I've got my logs here, and I can take a look at whatever I like. So I can look at my this specific log for this Shadow Protect agent, and it's going to give me everything here. So you can see how quickly that it works. The zip file, of course, actually enables you to download larger amounts of information and it's not going to use too much bandwidth. And whenever you've recovered what you want to recover, you can hit that, the change recovery point button, and it's gone. So really quick, really easy recovery of files and folders. This feature is available in Cloud Plus and Cloud Premium. And now, of course, the virtualization. So this is the only feature um, that's on this. If you want access to virtualization, sorry, the Cloud Premium is the way to go. It will also give you access to the file and folders and the physical restore option. So for the utmost disaster recovery, this is the plan that you'll select. Um, so let's say that on site we've had a, we've had a full on crash. Let's say we're a smaller business. We only have one server. We call it Exchange Server, but it runs Exchange, it runs SQL, it runs everything that we need that's critical for our business. You simply need to select the recovery point. Of course, I'm naturally going to pick the latest one. Hit load. You can spec it with cores, RAM, obviously select the network type. Now, you'll notice that we're not exactly giving it that much spec here. The reason for that is because we don't want people using too much spec if they're just doing tests. Obviously, I mean, we've seen cases previously and, and in the US as well where people actually boot up a server with like 50 cores and 100 gigs of RAM and they don't need it. They're just using unnecessary specifications. So um, we actually won't give you access to whatever you want here, but in a disaster scenario, all you need to do is give us a call, the sales or the technical team, and we can allocate whatever resources this, this machine needs, of course, within reason. And provided it is within reason, then we won't actually charge you extra for it as well. So I'm going to hit Create VM. 
and this is going to take us through the first stage of the virtualization. It will then ask us to enter the backup image password. All backups that go into the storage craft cloud need to be encrypted for security purposes, which also means that some um, your images are safe for you in the cloud. And then give this another 10 or 15 seconds or so, and we should be at the final screen. Um, and once we get there, we will be able to directly RDP into this machine um, and all that other good stuff. So it's only taken us about 30 seconds to spin up this server. It is a very small server, granted, but you'll find that the process typically won't take any more than a couple of minutes from what we've seen from most of our tests. You can download a direct RDP into this machine. It connects, yes. And it's loading up now as we speak. Now, it's great to be able to RDP into here, um, but at the end of the day, this machine is up in the storage craft cloud. It's up in our data center at Equinix, at our space at the data center. But it's not really connected to anything, so it's not of much use to us until we set up a network. Um, and the beauty of the cloud is that it actually enables you to very quickly and very easily go into networking and set up a VPN to connect this machine back to a network. Um, now, before I set up the VPN, I am going to temporarily just stop this machine. It's not going to fully destroy it, just pause it. The reason I'm doing this is because to connect the machine to the VPN, I do need to stop the machine. So I go into networking. I can now go into VPN config. Now, I've already got a preloaded VPN here, and this would be advisable as well. It's not difficult to set up, but if you want to get this already, it means that when it comes time for a disaster, you just add in the VMs and you're good to go. So I'm going to add the Exchange Server VM, which is my only VM for the small business. I've got a name. I've got a network address. You can also add in remote devices. Now, this means that these clients, these machines, you'll be able to log into the cloud portal. And then from this page, you can have access to a Windows, uh, Apple, or Linux VPN client. So you can actually connect into this machine via your remote device. Now, another way that you can set it up, which we do advise, and probably the easiest way to do it, is to set up a VPN and connect it to a routing and remote access server. Now, in doing this, you spin up the machine, at, obviously, within the cloud. If you can connect it to the routing and remote access server at one location, you have all the employees then at that other location, or all the people associated to the server, and they can then connect into the machine via the routing and remote access server, which is communicating via the VPN. So that's a, a one suggested way of setting it up. Or, of course, all remote devices can indeed set up their own VPN client to get in there. Um, now that everything's set up, I'm going to update my VPN to make sure that all the changes have been applied, and I'm going to start it. And now that it's started, I will go to the Exchange server. And it's going to tell me that it's actually now been bridged to the VPN. So now that that's bridged, I can re-enter my password and can spin this machine back up. And now once it's up, it's connected to the VPN. It means that I can then access it via the remote devices or via the routing and remote access server. So in the case that you've had a full local disaster, there's been a fire, there's been a theft, there's been a flood, what have you, the ability to actually go into any web portal, log into the cloud portal, spin up a server in a couple of minutes, and then set up that VPN, it's a really, really quick, really, really easy process to actually get started. So we've taken something um, that's typically what you would think to be a very long, very arduous, very difficult process, and we've managed to make it quite trivial. I mean, it's, it's, there's mouse clicks, a couple of mouse clicks here and there, and you're good to go. Plus, if you've already set the VPN up, then you're laughing. I mean, it's not going to take you a long time to actually get back up and running at all. And now that this machine's in the cloud, so let's say you've had that local disaster. Let's say it was a fire. The fire's been put out. Um, it's been rebuilt. Or let's say there's a theft, and, you, and you've replaced the server, as another example, right? Then I've got another server back, um, and I want to restore it. So what I can then do is I'll then go to physical restore and, of course, request this BMR drive. It will automatically assign it to the recovery point of the virtual machine that I have up and running, and then obviously request the drive. Now, that will be sent to whatever address I specify. Then I'll get that BMR drive. I'll plug it in. It's preloaded with the recovery environment. It'll take you step by step through the process to recover. Then it will get to a point where it says you are now ready to bring the changes across from this machine to finalize that to the current machine. So that will then say, are you happy to turn off the cloud machine? Everyone's logged off from the cloud machine. That's all good. So you hit yes. The cloud machine will then be taken offline. Before that happens, of course, the changes that have been made to the server will be replicated back across to the client site to ensure that seamlessly the original images of the server plus the new changes that have been made to this virtualized server are all brought across 
to the server that we're restoring from, and then the restore process will finish. And just like that, you've got the server back up and running again. So you've had the disaster, you've recovered from it, you've got the machine back, everything's back to normal, and you're very happy. So that's how it works. That's the advantages of it. So to summarize what we've discussed today, Storage Craft Cloud Services, it's a, it's a great way to take advantage of off-site disaster recovery. The virtualization is definitely something to take notice of. I don't know of any other solution that can virtualize this quickly. Um, in the event of a disaster, it's an extremely valuable solution. And the ability to actually seamlessly then restore from the BMR drive and then bring all the other changes across makes it really simple to use. So great technology out there, and uh, I hope that there's a, there's a lot of value that uh, clients can see in it. So if you do, um, if you have further interest in the Storage Craft Cloud, then you can feel free to get in touch with us here at Storage Craft. If you go to our website, you will see um, contact details on the bottom of the page, emails and phone numbers, etc. So, and if you do already have a relationship with one of our account managers, you can also speak to them. So thanks very much for your time on today's demonstration, and I certainly hope everybody got a lot out of it.